Why did Angel Gabriel take the voice of Zacharias away? Why did Angel Gabriel judge Zechariah so severely? To find this answer, we find the answer to this question in the book of Luke. Luke being this story by introducing us to the parents of John the Baptist. They lived during the time of King Herod the Great. The couple was Zacharias and Elizabeth. This pair had no children, a critical condition for anyone. The problem was deepened because they were both well advanced in years. Both of them were holy people. Zacharias was a priest who was part of the Abijah division. Elizabeth was also descended from the priestly family of Aaron. Both she and her husband were pious Jews who strictly followed the scriptures of the Old Testament in terms of their moral and ceremonial practices. Of course, they were not perfect, but when they did sin, they made sure to offer a sacrifice or otherwise to obey the ritualistic requirement. Zacharias was doing his job as a priest in the temple one day. This was a great day in his life because he had been chosen by chance to burn incense in the holy place. Jewish tradition says that some priests get this chance once in their lifetime. The people had gathered outside and were praying. With priest and people engaged in prayer, it was an appropriate time and setting for a divine revelation. An angel of the Lord appeared on the right-hand side of the altar, the place of favor. When Zacharias first saw an angel, he was terrified and who could blame him? This was a common reaction in the word of God. However, the angel reassured him with wonderful news. Elizabeth would have a son, whose name would be John, the favor or grace of Jehovah. He would not only make his parents happy, but he would also be a blessing to many. This child would be great in the sight of the Lord. First of all, he would be great in his personal separation to God. He would drink neither wine made from grapes nor strong drink made from grain. Luke 1.18 Amplified Bible And Zacharias said to the angel, How will I be certain of this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in age. The aged Zacharias was struck by the sheer impossibility of the promise. His question voiced all the pent-up doubt of his heart. Whereby shall I know this? This was not a humble request for his faith to be strengthened, but a peevish response to what was said to him, as if he were saying, I will never believe this. Even though there are many examples in the Old Testament of people having children when they were older, he can't believe that he will have this child of promise. For I am an old man, and my wife have not only been all her days barren, but is now well stricken in years and not likely ever to have children. Luke 1 to 20 The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words which will come true at their appointed time. Gabriel reminds Zacharias of who he is and where he has come from. There is a big contrast between I am an old man and I am Gabriel, which held more weight. Gabriel also preaches the gospel to Zacharias, brings you glad tidings. Though commonly described as an archangel, Gabriel is mentioned in the scripture only as one who stands in the presence of God and who brings messages from God to man. Zacharias would lose his ability to speak until the child was born because he had doubted. When a believer has doubts about God's word, he loses his testimony and his song. Unbelief seals the lips until faith returns and bursts forth in praise and witness. Zechariah raises doubts about the angel's message, for the prospective parents are now beyond normal childbearing age. If this were not the angel of the Lord that stood in the presence of God, this might have made sense. Sometimes even good people have doubts about God's promise. The angel tells Zechariah, in effect, 
Just be quiet for a while and watch God work. So a sign of silence is given until God performs his work. Zechariah becomes temporarily mute. This sign is a pointer to the major lesson of this passage. God will bring his promise to pass. He will perform his word. Zechariah must listen to God and trust that he will do what he has promised. Zechariah could not move in a state of unbelief. It was critical that this prophecy be fulfilled. Without John the Baptist, there is no herald announcing the arrival of the Messiah. If there is no herald announcing the Messiah's arrival, the Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah remain unfulfilled. If any of the prophecies of the Old Testament regarding the first coming of the Messiah are unfulfilled, then Jesus did not fulfill all things. If Jesus did not fulfill all things, then he did not complete God's plan of redemption for you and I, and we must perish in our sins. Outside, the people were waiting impatiently. Ordinarily, the priest who was burning incense would have appeared much sooner. When Zacharias finally emerged, he had to communicate with them through sign language. After completing his tour of duty at the temple, the priest returned home, still unable to speak, just as the angel had predicted. When Elizabeth became pregnant, she went into seclusion in her home for five months, rejoicing within herself that the Lord had seen fit to lift the stigma of childlessness from her life. The fact that Zechariah doubted the angel's word meant he was already at risk. What God promises, he will perform. Only he will do it in his time and sometimes in surprising ways. When the time of fulfillment comes, we realize that his timing was better than ours. Perhaps we sometimes wish we could be in the bedroom of heaven, telling God how to make his plans. This passage calls our attention to the fact that his plan has its own design and timing. The universe's creator understands what he is doing. Sometimes we're deprived of something because God has better things in store for us in the future. When we wait patiently on the Lord, he frequently gives us more than we could have imagined. Zechariah and Elizabeth desired a child. Instead, they received a prophet. God's ways are set to his time, and they are frequently filled with things that make us wonder while we rejoice in his surprise. After the birth of his son, Zechariah is mentioned again. Elizabeth's family and friends wanted to name the baby Zechariah at the circumcision, but Elizabeth insisted on the name John. Luke 1, 59-64 And it happened that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. And yet his mother responded and said, No, indeed, but he shall be called John. And they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. And they made signs to his father as to what he wanted to call him. And he asked for a tablet and write as follows, His name is John. And they were all amazed. And at once his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began speaking in praise of God. God's promise came true, just as he said it would. God always does what he says he will do. We read, They rejoiced with her. This fulfilled Gabriel's promise recorded at Luke 1.14. Many will rejoice at his birth. According to the angel's command, both Zacharias and Elizabeth knew the child's name had to be John. We read that immediately his mouth was opened. Zacharias could speak again, just as Gabriel predicted. He spoke up, thanking God. Zacharias' first words were praise to God, which was fitting. His reprimand for disobedience had not turned him bitter. Instead, it had increased his desire to trust God at every opportunity. The prophetic words spoken by Zechariah are recorded in Luke 1, 67-79. Luke 1, 67-71, Amplified Bible. 
Now Zacharias, his father, was filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by him, and he prophesied, saying, Blessed, praised, glorified by the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited us and brought us redemption to his people, and he has raised up a horn of salvation, a mighty and valiant Savior for us in the house of David his servant. Just as he promised by the mouth of his holy prophet from the most ancient times, salvation from our enemies, and from the hand of all who hate us. At this time, these words could have been presented in the form of a song. His words reveal the transformation of his heart and the strengthening of his faith that occurred while he was mute for nine months. Many people are surprised because Mary had the same experience but her outcome was very different. Gabriel had also visited Mary and gave her outstanding news. Now in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly perplexed at what he said and kept carefully considering what kind of greeting this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. Listen carefully, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and eminent and will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob, Israel forever and his kingdom there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin and have no intimacy with any man? Luke 1, 26-34, Amplified Bible how can this be, since I do not know a man? It was logical for Mary to ask this question. She asked the same question Zacharias asked, but his question was asked in skeptical unbelief, and her question was asked in wonder-filled faith. Mary's question, how can this be, was one of wonder, but not of doubt. How could she bear a child when she had never had relations with a man? Although the angel did not say so in so many words, the answer was virgin birth. It would be a miracle of the Holy Spirit. He would come upon her and the power of God would overshadow her. To Mary's problem of how, it seemed impossible to human reckoning. God's answer is the Holy Spirit. Luke 1, 38. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel left her. From Zechariah we learned that when we faithfully follow the Lord and continue to lift up our prayers to him, he hears us and answers according to his will for our lives. Nothing is impossible for the Lord to accomplish. The plan that God has for us might not look anything like what we think we want, but God's way is inevitably the best option. Although Zechariah may have thought that all he desired was a son, God instead provided him with a prophet whose name will forever be associated with the events surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ. When the angel finished speaking to him, he should have bowed his head and worshipped the Lord, saying, Be it unto thy servant according to what thou hast spoken. But he failed to do so. Now in striking him dumb, God dealt justly with him, because he had objected against God's word. Because of this, we can admire God's patience and his forbearance towards us. He was treated kindly, tenderly and graciously by God. To begin with, he prevented him from speaking any more such distrustful and unbelieving words. It is better not to speak at all than to speak wickedly. Secondly. Being unable to speak has strengthened his faith, and this has enabled him to think more clearly. Thirdly, it was a great mercy that God's words should be fulfilled in their season, 
notwithstanding his sinful distrust.